Okay, in this box here, it's describing the definition of a polynomial. Polynomial. It looks confusing, but it's really not meant to be. Um, for example, what this is showing here is that the a's represent the coefficient. The, um, whenever we write a polynomial, we write it in descending order. Like, for example, if we look at this example down here, uh, we have x to the fifth and x to the fourth and x to the cubed. Now, it looks like there's no x squared. That just means that the coefficient there for the x squared would be 0x plus 2x. And this a sub 0, that's just what we call our constant. Uh, because that would be, in this case here, down, looking at this uh, quintic polynomial, the constant there would be 0 because there is no number at the end there. But other times, like for example, with this, exa with this one here, this cubic polynomial, that the constant there would be 9. But we always put things in what we call descending order. We do that by looking at the exponents. We start with the largest exponent first, and then the next smaller one. So if our largest exponent is a 6, the next smaller one would be 6 minus 1, which would be 5, and then 6 minus 2 would be 4, and so on. And again, like I said, these numbers in front of the uh, variables, we call those the coefficients. The n is the degree of a polynomial. So when it's in simplified form, the highest exponent is the degree of the polynomial. And we name uh, polynomials based on their degree. And I've already used some of those names here. But uh, when the degree is 0, again, then we call that the constant, which in this case here would be 2.38. Um, if it's got a degree, degree one, if it's got a degree of one, we say it's a linear polynomial. Degree of two, we've talked about those already. Those are quadratics. If it's got a degree of three, it's a cubic. Degree of four, it's a quartic. Degree of five is a quintic. And beyond that, we don't have any special names. Well, let's look at this activity now. It says a company wants to produce an open top box from a 60 centimeter by 40 centimeter piece of cardboard. They want the box to have the largest possible volume. The pictures show the way the cardboard will be cut and what the box will look like after it is assembled. So we're going to cut a length x out of each corner, and we're going to then fold up the sides to create our box. We want to figure out what value for x would give us the biggest volume for this particular box. Now we know that to find the volume, we take the length times the width times the height. Well, it really doesn't matter what order we multiply those together, but we have these three dimensions. Well. Instead of length, width, and height, we're going to use those dimensions. The fact that the height of the box will equal x. The length would be 60 minus 2x. And again, the reason why we have 60 minus 2x is because the length of the cardboard is 60 centimeters, and we're taking away x from both sides. So that length there would be 60 taking away 2x. This dimension over here would be 45 minus 2x. And again, the reason why is the width of our cardboard there is going to be 45 centimeters, but we're taking away x from both sides. Uh, when we fold it up, so it'll be 45 minus 2x. So to find the volume here, we're going to multiply those three dimensions together, which would give us x times 60 minus 2x times 45 minus 2x. And that would give us an equation in terms of finding the volume. For what value, let's look at step two now. It says, for what values of x does v have meaning in this situation? Well, we don't want to have, we're not going to have values for x that are going to be less than zero. So what we're going to do is each of these dimensions here are going to be, um, and then it's not going to be any of them that are equal to 0. So we're going to set each of these dimensions to be greater than 0 and figure out what values for x would be in our range here. So starting out with the first one there, which is the plane of x, well, we know that that dimension's got to be greater than 0. So there's nothing to simplify there. So that gives us the smallest is that it's got to be greater than 0. And then if we look at the next dimension, the 60 minus 2x, if I set that greater than 0, I would subtract 60 from on both sides, giving us negative 2x is greater than negative 60. But then I have to divide by negative 2. Now remember when we're working with inequalities, when we divide by negative, we have to flip the inequality. So when I divide both sides by negative 2 to get 30, I have to make sure I flip the inequality. So now I have that x would be less than 30. So now right now, if I were to leave it there, my dimensions would have to be from 0 to 30. But we have another dimension to consider. And for this one, 45 minus 2x, when I set that and say that that's got to be greater than 0, I had subtract 45 from both sides, leaving me with negative 2x is greater than negative 45. Divide both sides by negative 2. Again, that means that I have to flip the inequality. And this time, I get that x is less than 22.5. So this one here in the middle, the x is less than 30, 
If I left it like that, that would give me some numbers that would not work with this third dimension. So my values for x have to go from 0 to 22.5. It has to be between 0 and 22.5. If I had a value of exactly 22.5, it would give me a volume of 0, which we wouldn't want. So that means it's got to be less than, not less than or equal to 22.5 there. If it was bigger than 22.5, in this dimension here, when I would put that number bigger than 22.5 in for x, I'd end up with a vol volume that would be negative, which is not possible. Now in step three, it says, so it says replace x with 10 inches um, in your, it should be 10 centimeters, uh, in your equation from step one. Well, I guess it does say with 10 in your equation from step one. What does your answer represent? So I'm going to put 10 in this equation that we had for the volume. And when I do that, I would have 60 minus 2 times 10, or 60 minus 20. And I'd have 45 minus 2 times 10, or 45 minus 20. And when I multiply 10 times 60 minus 20, or 40, and 45 minus 20, or 25, when I multiply those together, I get 10,000. So what that means is that when we would have a length here of 10 centimeters that would cut out from each corner, the volume of the box would be 10,000 cubic centimeters. Well, let's graph the answer that we had in our first equation there. So why don't you guys get out your calculators. And we're going to create a graph here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, again, it's going to be x. Now, you have to tell the calculator to multiply. I know it seems weird. We should be able to just put x, then parentheses. But we have to put x times, and then in parentheses. Um, and, if, and if you don't put the times there, you're going to get an error message. I'm just telling you right now. But it would be x times, and then 60 minus 2x. Then again, we're going to tell the calculator that we're multiplying here uh, for, by 45 minus 2x. Hit Enter, and we, it looks like we don't see a whole lot. That's because our window settings are not appropriate, because this is only going up to 10. So we're going to change our window settings. So let's go to Menu. And we're going to go to Window Zoom and Window Settings. So we know our minimum value for our graph has got to be for our x minimum. We're not going to have any negative numbers. We're just going to put, uh, we'll just put negative 1, just so that way we can see the x-axis. But we know the x minimum we want is going to be at 0. The x maximum, remember we had 22.5, is going to be the largest that we're going to have. So I'm just going to go a little bit beyond that. I'm going to put 25 here. Our x scale, we'll just leave that as auto. Now our minimum, we don't want to have a value that's negative for our minimum value for y, but I'm just going to put uh, negative uh, 10 here so we can see the y-axis on our, on our, in our window. But now our y maximum. Now when we put 10 in here, we got 10,000 as our answer. So we want to make sure that we're going up pretty high here. I'm just going to be safe and I'm going to put in 20,000 and hit OK. And so now let's look at our graph here. So I'm going to trace this graph. I'm going to just do graph trace. And for some reason, it's giving us our numbers here in scientific notation. But this is our, our first value here is our value for x. Our value for y here is um, the volume of the box. And so when I look at this, and I look at some of these numbers here. This here represents the maximum value. So this means when my value for x is about 8.5, that our maximum value is 1.02 times 10 to the fourth, or uh, 10,200, we could round that to be. Now, for some reason, I don't know why my calculator is doing that, but uh, your answer might be getting a more exact answer, which would be the better answer. But if you have this, then it's fine to have it in scientific notation as well. But that would be the maximum value. And you can see that after you, if you use a larger value for x, your volume is going to get smaller. If we use a smaller value for x, again, our value is going to be smaller than that. But as we get to that exact value of 8.49 or about 8.5 is where we reach our maximum volume. So what is the maximum point of the graph and explain its meeting? So again, we have 8.5, 
um, centimeters would be the maximum value, and it means that at that point, um, you have a maximum volume of about 10,200 cubic centimeters. Well, that brings us to this point here that to describe graphs of polynomial functions, it helps to know their maximum and minimum values and their intercepts. Now, when we're asked to find the x and y intercept, it's important to know how to do that. To find the y intercept, remember that's always where x is 0 and y is some number. And the x intercept is always where y is 0 and x is some value. So to find the y intercept, we replace x with 0. And to find the x intercept, we're going to replace y with 0. Well, let's look at this first example. It says, what is the degree of this polynomial? Now, we're not going to expand this out. We're going to learn in a future video how to expand these, but we're not going to expand this out. But just know that when we cube something, that means that we're multiplying it times itself three times. So in other words, I would have x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1 multiplied it times itself again three times. Same thing with the x plus 4. That's going to be squared, so it's going to be multiplied by itself twice. So what ends up happening is I would have, when I expand this out, I'm going to end up having x cubed followed by a bunch of other stuff. And when I expand this other piece out, I'm going to have um, x, uh, we're going to be multiplying these values. I'm going to have x squared plus a bunch of other stuff. And when I multiply these together, remember when we multiply, we add the exponents when the bases are the same. So if I were to multiply these together, I would have end up with x to the fifth power. So my degree here of this polynomial would end up being x to the fifth, again, followed by a whole bunch of other pieces. Now, there's another way to get this, and that's just when we're multiplying, we can, we're, we're trying to find the um, value of our degree, we can add the exponents. As long as the degrees inside of here are 1, this is x to the first, this is x to the first, all we have to do is add together those outside exponents, and that would give us the degree of our polynomial. Now, if there was an exponent inside of the parentheses, it would complicate things a little bit, uh, but we'll worry about that later. But for right now, we can just add the exponents when the degree inside the polynomials are 1. So the degree of this polynomial would end up being 5. Then it says find the y-intercept of its graph without graphing. So to find the y-intercept here, we're going to replace in this equation, we're going to replace x with 0. Well, if I replace x with 0, I'd have 0 minus 1 being cubed. Multiply that times uh, 0 plus 4 being squared. Well, 0 minus 1 is a negative 1. And negative 1 cubed is negative 1. And I'm going to multiply that times 0 plus 4, which is 4. And 4 squared is 16. So I get negative 16. So the way that we're going to write the y-intercept is we're going to write that it is where x is 0, y is negative 16. To find the x-intercepts, what we're going to do is we're going to put 0 in for y. Now what we're going to end up doing here is we would have x minus 1 being cubed times x plus 4 being squared all equals 0. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set each of these pieces equal to 0 and solve. So we're going to have x minus 1. Now there's three of them, so we'd say it's multiplicity 3. Uh, but we're going to set x minus 1 equal to 0. Because this is going to tell us what x would end up being in our equation. That would give us 0 as our answer. So when we add 1 to both sides, I get x equals 1. So that's one of my solutions. Because if I put 1 in here, 1 minus 1 is 0. It doesn't matter what x is over here if x is 1. Because 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 squared is 25, but multiply that times 0, you get 0 as your answer. So one of the x-intercepts is where x is 1. The other is going to be where x, if I set this x plus 4 equal to 0, I subtract 4 from both sides, I get negative 4. So I get these are my solutions for x. x could equal 1 or x could equal negative 4. And... Again, we could write these as coordinates. This would be where x is 1, y is 0. And when x is negative 4, y is 0. Why don't you guys try this next example now on your own? So why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct solution. Okay, so let's check to see how you did here. So you should have gotten uh, 4 as your answer. 
for the degree of the polynomial. Again, we just add the exponents. Now, this 2x plus 1 has an exponent of 1. I'm sorry, 2x plus 3 has an exponent of 1. So combine that, so add that with the other exponent there to get the total degree of that polynomial would be 4. To find the y-intercept, again, we replace x with 0. If you replace x with 0, we would get 3 in this first piece. And 3 to the first power, again, would just be 3. Put 0 in here, and we get 0 minus 2, or negative 2. When you cube that, you get negative 8. And 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. So my y-intercept would be 0, negative 24. Now to find the x-intercepts, remember we set each of these pieces up equal to 0, because we're replacing y, or the uh, p of x, they're replacing that with 0. So I solve 2x plus 3 equals 0, subtract 3, divide by 2, and I get negative 3 halves. So to have the coordinate negative 3 halves, 0 would be one of my x-intercepts. Take the other piece, 5x minus 2, set that equal to 0. Add 2, divide by 5, I get 2 fifths. So two, where x is 2 fifths and y is 0, it would be another x-intercept. Well, that's where we're going to stop the video um, for this first um, part. Um, so again, this first part, just important to find, know how to find the x and y intercepts. In the next video that you will watch, we're going to learn how to find what's called the extrema for a function. That would be the maximum and minimum values. So with that, why don't we stop the video here, and why don't you go on now, if you need to, to the next video, where we will learn about these two pieces.